everybody, what the flick? Talking about a little show we like to call Gotham. William Bibiani, Alonzo Duralde, Francis Maxwell, back with us again after uh -huh. taking last week off. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be when back. When did you turn into a morning <laughs> zoo crew DJ? <laughs> One time he introed it, and it was like he was a smooth FM radio guy, and I was about to date him. Uh, it was really yeah, good intro. That's good. I like, I like and to And now it's like, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Taking so the fourth color. Gotham, episode uh, 202, Rise of the Villains, knock, knock. So is every episode this season going to be Rise of the Villains, I'm, colon, something? I'm hoping it starts off with there's like a, like a six-episode arc, like Rise of the Villains, and then like seventh episode, it's like the plateau Rose. of the villain, yeah. you know, something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so the villains are uh, out and about, yeah. and... Um, what do we think? Doing I, some stuff. I, I love. Yeah, it. this was. I thought a really great episode. Uh, I loved because it because stuff happened. Yeah. <laughs> Des despite the obvious, as I mentioned, the obvious uh, similarities to the Dark Knight with the police uniforms, mm -hmm. with the camera kind of like. Well, that even started place. last week with the guy who yeah. was like drew the the nuts guy who was manipulated by the supervillain yeah, into exactly. getting captured, and then yeah. his body explodes into thingy, and yeah. then people get out. I was a little disappointed that you know we finally get a black female commissioner of Gotham. City. City and they can't get, kill get, her get, fast get, enough. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Well, I, I, the centerpiece of this whole thing, I, what I like about this episode of Gotham in particular is that sometimes it feels like in a lot of shows, there's just one centerpiece and everything else is filler, trying to get to it or get away from it. Sure. Here we have a bunch of different fun highlights. There's throwing people off of buildings. Yeah. There's burning cheerleaders alive. And then it all culminates with shooting every cop in Gotham yeah. except the three people who hide. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, like and firing Alfred. Oh, I know. It's crazy. Well, in all fairness, Alfred, he, I would have fired Alfred too because we'll get to the cop thing in a second. But here's the thing with Alfred. So we finally we finally get into the damn like bunker. Yeah. All right. And Bruce is gonna like put in four, eight, fifteen, sixteen, twenty, three, forty-two, and find out everything about the plot that we, we've been he's been like not doing for forever. Bruce has done nothing for so long. I can finally look at this computer and jumpstart my subplot. And then Alfred immediately breaks the machine. <laughs> And I looked, it's like he's breaking season two, like right in front of us. Like, oh, we're gonna have to, how long until we find out what's on this I don't know if, you dicks. I don't know if I would fire Alfred as much. I would fire the person who's writing for Alfred. Now I'm speaking on behalf, <laughs> I'm speaking on behalf of Englishism, like people using English terms, but you don't use meat and poultry in every single like interaction. Yeah. Kipper. Sausage? Like, how many, yeah. how many you different words? You don't understand. Words? He's but, from but, the British Isles. But, but it built, I, I, it built I, I, to the what's a kipper joke. I understand. Joke, which was, like, you know, but growing up in the UK, no one uses it that many times. You have, you're done up like a kipper. Great, we get that. But no one calls someone a sausage. Like, that is, that is gone. <laughs> For me, I feel like the biggest writing flaw in this episode is, okay, so Bruce fires Alfred. Of course he would. I'd fire him too. Yeah. And then Alfred says, okay, great, I've, I'm fired. I'm sorry about that. I'm still your legal guardian. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do? Go to a, like a train station and yeah. leave you on your own reconnaissance when you were going to build a bomb yesterday? <laughs> like, no, there's, oh, I guess I am going to do that, yeah. <laughs> but then we get introduced to, the, to Lucius Fox and the, we'll the conversation. We, 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 met sorry, last we, we met him briefly last season. So, what do we think of their interaction? It just felt like I, I didn't understand where they were going with it. Like, so he's, he's Lucius Fox is awesome, and he's always awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Alfred's like, "You better be awesome, right, or I'm gonna kip you up. Kipper, kipper, I'm gonna tuck like you, yeah, like that, a kip. I don't even know what that, it's that was. That was a that was a barroom conversation between two men that could have gone in a whole other direction. Yeah, if you know way. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt I felt it was going that direction at first. Call me Alfred. Yeah. No, <laughs> Something's going down. Yeah. So, uh, so we've got okay, and again, we'll talk about the cafe in a Maniacs with an X. Yes. Boy, does that sound like a '90s villain we would have forgotten by now. That <laughs> yeah. sounds like Aztec's arch nemesis, right? Like, or, or Static Shocks. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, like we're gonna we'll put an X in it. Like, would, here's the thing. They weren't out of guys. If they were like, they were throwing people off, okay, put an M on him, bam, A, N, I, well, Maybe they had a. a spare because it was originally going to be CS. Right? And, yeah. and then they're like, oh, no, no, X, and then they could save one, and then they had punctuation. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I feel like these are the questions I I, I want resolved. Yeah. And I just I, they're, they're, they're poor planners. <laughs> Even just when you, you have a Zippo lighter to set a bunch of cheerleaders on fire. A match. Like, Peter Lorre would have cut off all of their fingers by the end of that <laughs> sequence. Yeah. You got that one. You got that one. Yes. I like that. Uh, but, like, seriously, like, any, like, 7-Eleven lighter would just Have sort a of backup. Yeah. yeah, matches. I, I, yes. Matches. I feel like they, in this season, though, they've, they've definitely came 
to play in this season and just emphasize that it is gimmicky at times, but it's pretty brutal. Like they're very they're, they're yeah. brutal in this, and I like that about it. I think that I'm enjoying the villains more so. Like last season, we. I mean, at this point, we were nearly at the Balloon Man last season. Like, so these are, the type, <laughs> these are the type of villains that we have to compare what to. What are the greatest the Balloon Man? I don't just I didn't remember, did the Balloon Man die? I floated. Did, did he float away? I don't even remember, remember what happened to the Balloon Man, but if they had brought him back, and that was just the whole thing, like, Balloon Man's just, like, signing people up. Yeah. Like, Wee! But this, uh, I, I, oh, sorry. So I was, that was the final point I was going to say. It's just, like, I feel like they're, they're emphasizing the brutality of this, which is making it a little bit more serious. Like coming into the to the police station and just complete, completely massacring everyone yeah. mm -hmm. is something that I never expected this Gotham season yeah. to be able to yeah, do. It's like, and well, it's something we, that's guess we got stakes now. Yeah, exactly. That's what I believe. So well, it's this weird tonal thing where it's hard to tell what Gotham is trying to be. Sometimes it's very broad and silly, like the whole like a lot of like the villains interacting and like. You know, oh, my samurai sword beats yeah. your chainsaw. Well, technically, no. And, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that sort of thing. Like, oh, that's that's very much Justice League Unlimited kind of villainy. Mm -hmm. And then they shoot a whole bunch of police officers in the face. And, and this is a show, again, that airs at 8 o'clock. Right? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like, I don't know what this... It's, it's this weird... That's the thing I kind of love about Gotham, though, is that it seems like it has... It's it, the, the show it's itself. It's still finding its way. But it doesn't even seem like it's finding its way. The show itself feels like it has some sort of personality disorder. Mm -hmm. The show itself is like <laughs> it's does, schizophrenic. It's schizophrenic. I, I'm hesitant to use like the the real word because I don't. Well, sure. I, I don't want to. Uh, I'm not a doctor. But I, 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 I don't. There's something wrong with it. Well, and it makes it interesting to watch. The, I feel like Gotham, the show, is a Batman villain. Yes, <laughs> that's why I feel. Well, like, you know, and, and Edward Nigma is our new Tyler Durden. Really? Because yes. I was going me, myself, and Irene. I was going, well, go I was going <laughs> Gollum. I don't yeah. know why I went. I went Gollum. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All valid. Yeah, all, they're, all, going. they're all, all good. I, the opening of the show, I want to talk a bit about the opening because I really, really liked uh, the cold open of the show where our primary villain, who's probably Ra Rachel Ghoul or someone, but whatever, uh, with the mayor's head in the box. And I just want right. to, you know, for many years, I was remembering the episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000 where uh, Dr. Oh. Forrester had invented unhappy meals oh. and and uh, Frank wanted his money back. And he was like, forceps, Frank, pain. And for Frank's like, no, I want my money. And then he says, the box, Frank. <laughs> I always figured that's what the box oh, was. Oh, see, I was thinking about the other MST, the one, the, 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 it was like danger, death, or something where someone is trapped in a thing where, you know, if you open your eyes, you'll be blinded. Well, then I'm just going to keep my eyes closed. Oh, drat! <laughs> 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 you know, he fell for the old spider in a box thing where there was no spider. Yeah. Ah, the bastard. Um, so, uh, oh, uh, Gordon, you're in a police station. Tell someone to grab Barbara. Yeah. Don't run across the police station to catch her. Just say, hey, there's one of those criminals. We just had a meeting about. <laughs> is that not like the... Get her. Is that like, no, you still get that soft spot that he doesn't want to fully admit that she's insane and he kind of wants to deal with her on No, his own I think terms. it's just a plot hole. <laughs> I, I, it could be, but it's the way like he. I, I'm somewhere between you. Yeah. I think he's maybe still shilly shallying a little bit, as yeah. far as like completely. He's shilly shallying. You can shilly shally and say, "Hey, could you grab her, please?" Yeah, I suppose. Well, when he's going through all the criminals, he's like, "All right, rapist did all this," and he went through Bob, and he's like killed her parents, but he didn't emphasize that he tried to like kidnapped his girlfriend, tried to kill like. Basically. I was gonna say that's that's did... the that's the cliff notes. At yeah, best exactly. Of what she pulled on. But I I do, I do want to talk about our, our our Joker a little bit because um. Can we just admit he's the Joker? Yeah, well, that's what he is. Uh, he's the he's Joker. We're be. not going to fuck around. We don't care if Gotham's allowed to say he's the Joker or not. He's the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. He's officially the Joker. We're calling him the Joker. I'm he's the Joker. Yeah. Even if he turns out not to be the Joker, he's still, the he's, Joker. still he's like the Joker 1.0. Like, what, what's you go. he going to be? The Creeper? I mean, yeah. come on. He's well, I, said, I said Captain Clem, which it turns out there actually was a Batman the Animated Series uh, character. Named Captain Clem. Well, there was a, he, uh, the Joker had a robot clown that was a uh, uh, ship's captain, uh -huh. and then Batman broke the robot. I had forgotten about this. So there was officially a Captain Clown in DC Clown. canon. So unle but unless this kid turns out to be a robot, that's not him. <laughs> I just so he's the Joker. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, anyway. I mean, he's really, he's captivating for me, very Jack Nicholson-esque from what, in, in his scenes that he's in. Did anyone else have that like weird like laughter bit when she spits in his mouth and he goes, oh, that was pleasantly, <laughs> what is that? Like, that surprisingly was pleasant. Yeah, that was surprisingly like, pleasant. The, the scenes he's in are just captivating for me. I, I mean, yeah. I'm really, I, of course, everyone wants to watch any person try to try to uh, play the Joker, it's just kind of you're always thinking back to whoever's played it in the past. And when a show like Gotham, you can never really relate that to movies. But he's done a great job for me. Every scene he's in, I'm captivated on what he's going to bring to it, and especially the way it ended. Of course, it, it was it resembled Heath Ledger's message to everyone in of the course. PlayStation. But 
I thought he was great, honestly, throughout. He's captivating me. Yeah, it's this is a hard character to make your own mm -hmm. because it has been so indelibly portrayed. But I think Cameron Monaghan's taking a good shot at it. And I think he's fine. He is magnetic and he's interesting. And mm -hmm. so even if, I mean, it's too early to see if he's going to like brand it in a way that Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson, even Cesar Romero did. Yeah. But Mark I, Hamill. Uh, and Mark Hamill, but I'd say he's he's on, he's off to a good start. I would say this, and I think it's an interesting observation. When we think about the characters on this show that we like to see the most, like you, we're really getting into the Joker now, awesome. We think about uh, the Penguin. The Penguin yeah. was such a wonderfully yeah. Shakespearean compelling presence last, last season. Uh, it's the characters who are most like the way they are in actual Batman. Yeah. Yeah, Harvey so, Bullock even. Yeah. Harvey Bullock, even Gordon to an extent, working mm -hmm. against the system, everything's bad, he's the lone voice of reason. Uh, it's basically anytime Gotham isn't Batman, that's when it sucks. Yeah. And it was like, oh, like what, Bruce Wayne, perfect example. Yeah, he's not yeah. Batman yet. If he was Batman, we'd be fine with this. <laughs> if Gotham was Batman, this would actually be a rock solid Batman. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I still liked Fish Mooney, and she was new. Uh, okay, but, but she, she was but she a would Batman fit, villain. She would though. fit yeah. in the Batman world for exactly. sure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She was totally fine. So uh, I guess my point is, bring in Batman. Be more Batman-y. Be Gotham. more Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. I, 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 I like where this, epi this, where this season is going. Sure. Uh, this Rise of the Villains thing seems a little more like a marketing gimmick. But as far as actually giving us this cadre of dangerous criminals and carrying them over from week to week, so we're not just doing like a bad guy of the week yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is, is I think, interesting. And I, I think they'd kind of taken the whole sort of you know, Maroney versus the ever the other mob boss. Falcone. Falcone. Falcone, kind of that went about as far as it was going to go. So I, I, I like that they're, they've shifted gears in that way, but they're still sort of remaining true to what works in this yeah. show. So, you know. Well, I, you've got, I think you've got three main subplots, right? So you've got what's going on with the Joker, and then you've got the Penguin. And I do like what's going to happen with uh, Nygma. Because I do, it would be an interesting twist if suddenly he sees the light now that he's saved the girl, right? Because mm -hmm. we hope that maybe the girl turns around and... It's like, all right, you saved me from a gunshot. I'll give you a shot, basically. But it's with those three that I, I, I just hope that they try and prolong it. And I hope that they mm -hmm. make spare out each episode because I don't, I don't want to go back to what we've seen last season. When we right. Well, and, 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 and obviously they, they have to kind of pace themselves because, yeah. you know, Bruce Wayne is... 14, and you know, still so 21 and still hand, if, he keeps, if he keeps sprouting like this, he's yeah. going to be Batman by the next season. Pretty much. You know, he grew like a foot. Yeah. What yeah. age is he supposed to be? 13? 14? I don't know. Uh, who cares? Uh, yeah. They've stopped <laughs> saying. I think when the show started, he was arguably supposed to be like 11, but he is not 11 yeah, now. So we're just gonna know. we're just gonna let it go. Yeah. So what age do you think he can be before he starts really becoming Batman? Maybe I should, maybe he'll six, start as when Robin he's, when he's legally allowed to be. He's he'll illegally allowed to get he'll married. He'll start as Robin and then he'll grow into Batman. Well, do they have to send him to Asia? Is that the new canon now? Or well, I, no, I guess or? Alfred's going to do most of the legwork on this oh, one. Yeah, maybe so. maybe they'll Im import people from Asia. Uh, to <laughs> sure. You don't want to outsource Batman in this economy. That's Come on, you right. want to bring yeah, people in. Great jobs here in Gotham. Yes, there you go. Uh, we'll be back next week with more uh, Gotham. Same what-the-flick time, same what-the-flick channel.